Today we have the Torbox Elite, which is a wireless shortcut key device designed to improve your digital art and content creation workflow. Does it stick to landing? Roll the tape and we'll find out. The Torbox Elite is a solid piece of kit. Each button has its own unique shape, so they're fairly easy to navigate to once you have some muscle memory after using the device for a while. The dials, especially with haptic turned on, give you some nice feedback so you can feel what's going on. If you're not used to that, think of a video game controller with sort of the rumble triggers on. The varying sizes of the buttons make them easy to find. And some of them, like this big one, have a texture applied to them, so you won't miss it when you move them back and forth. The back of the unit has your Bluetooth sync button, your power, and holds two AA batteries. You're going to need that for wireless connectivity. The pretty weighty unit won't slide on you on a desk, and it's charged by USB-C. The cable could or could not be included depending on what kit you bought. Alright, so let's pay the bills. We already mentioned it's wired and wireless. This is Bluetooth 5.0. There's 14 programmable keys, which includes the three dials that have push button functionality. There's two levels of haptic feedback, 150 button combinations. We'll talk about that later. Supporting more than 400 shortcuts. The estimated battery life is two months, which so far I don't have any reason to dispute. Hey, it's John. And for years, I've been using this Wacom Express Key Remote as my primary driver for digital art and other things. Now, with this review, I might as well toss this thing in the garbage. All right, I probably shouldn't have done that. So at least for the cost of the Express Key Remote, isn't that at least worth a like and a subscribe? I think it is. Okay, so here's my setup. I've got my Huion Frego Medium, which I did a review on. That link is down below. I've got my Torbox Elite and I've got Clip Studio Paint open. This is gonna be a full walkthrough of Clip Studio Paint. It's how I use the Torbox Elite in Clip Studio Paint. Now Torbox claims there are tons of button combinations and that's true. However, I'm gonna show you a couple different ways to combine these buttons. And then I'm actually gonna show you a problem. I use the D-pad here for all my modifier keys. So that's your hand tool, color picker, all those kinds of things. The dials I'm going to use for very obvious things. Zoom, brush size, and everything. What's nice about these dials is that they have click button functionality. So for example, if I'm zooming in, I've also got this set so that when I click the button, I can invert the image so I can see what I'm doing. Second, I've got this big dial down here set to rotate. I like the bigger dial for that as opposed to the smaller one. It's just easier for me to get to. When I click this button, it's gonna reset where the image is on the screen. Now this big dial in the middle here, I use for brushes. But notice I'm on the eraser. Now I don't wanna to have to take my hand off the Torbox Elite to move around for brushes. So what I've done is I've set one shortcut when I click the button in to my brushes. And I, you could say I could draw and I've got this little button here set to eraser. This makes it very easy for me to have to not navigate the brush menu, which I find cumbersome to begin with, and just get to the brushes I use to most just like that. I've got these two buttons here for undo and redo. So if I undo it, now I click the other one to redo it. Now, when it comes to these bigger buttons, let me show you what's really neat when you color it. Now, say for example, the shape we drew, I wanna fill this in with a solid color. I'm gonna hit my modifier key, press up to get my magic wand. Now I'm gonna select it in there. All I gotta do now is hit this guy and it's gonna fill it with my foreground color. You see how fast your workflow can be once you know where all these keys are? I'm gonna undo that. And then what I wanna do is I wanna to switch to my brush tool and I wanna paint inside here with my foreground color. And now to cycle through my colors, I'm gonna click this small one and then if I double click it, I'm actually gonna get transparency, which is really cool and a really good use for the double tap feature. So let's try that. I'm gonna go in here, got my background color, and then I'm gonna click it twice. And now I've got transparency. That is like pretty cool. And once again, I click this whole thing and I just wanna fill it. All I have to do is cycle through the presets. It's pretty neat. Now let me tell you how I accomplish this. This key and this key I have them set as a modifier, which means in the software, I just set them to like the number one key or something like that. Something that doesn't do anything in Clip Studio Paint. So what that means is when I click this, 
all these other buttons now have a secondary function as opposed to when I don't have it clicked in. So now when I click this button, all these other buttons, except that modifier button on the side, also have a different functionality. I have three different functions set to every single button on there except the modifier one. And then once again, I want to go back to my brushes. And if I want to deselect, I've already got that set up. And then I'm on my way. I never really have to take my hand off the tour box. And that's the magic. I will. I'll get to it. You're not the boss of me. Okay. So to show you what I'm talking about, I got to give you a quick run through of the software. And you see this upper left hand pane? These are all the different profiles you have set up for whatever software program you're using. If you're not sure where to start, you can go pull down somebody else's saved profile up on the DaVinci site. A lot of users have already uploaded their presets. Now for me, I primarily use Photoshop and Clip Studio Paint and DaVinci. So if we look, and we expand all these out, you could see Torbox isn't kidding when they say they have all these number of different functionalities and combinations. However, you see the side key here? If I double click into that, all of these different things are shortcuts that I set up. You'll see I have this set up to the number one key, which has no functionality in Clip Studio Paint. And I've configured that to modifier. So when I click it, it basically does nothing. However, it does signal to the software that I am asking it to invoke its secondary functionality, which I have also preset here. So we talked about it before, the knob with the brush size right here. And then when I click it, that is set right there. If I want a secondary functionality, all I would have to do is choose the combination I want and then set whichever button I want. You recall, I have two modifiers in use. I have the side key and I have the top key. So if I invoke the top key, what will happen is if I want to reduce brush opacity or increase brush opacity, that's all I have to do. I have to hold that button down and then click the dial. All of these are as easy as me going in here and setting up what I want. You could set up any key and any label. Just make sure when you put the label in here that you save it. Otherwise, it won't have a label on there. Now, this HUD button functionality all it really does is turn this little crosshair out. All this crosshair does, you can't click it. It just reminds you of what you have programmed to the D-pad. So if I hit my modifier, it's going to change and show me what those things are. That's pretty cool. It'd be nice if the HUD was the whole thing, but I guess that would take up too much screen space. But you can see when I hit my second modifier, those are different functionalities. Now, the other on-screen feature is kind of buried in here. So if we go in to this menu again when we go into tool menu you can have these different on-screen menus pop up depending on what button combination you click so i was able to customize this myself hold it layer and when i close this when i bring it up if clip studio had stuff going on every time i click one of these things magic is going to happen i can cycle through these with the dial but that becomes a little bit of a hassle if I want to zoom in if this menu's up. Last, this auto switch feature means when the application is open, the Torbox console will instantly cycle to that application so you don't have to go in there and click around. Now you can if you want to just by turning this off, but I leave it on. The Torbox Elite comes equipped with haptic feedback. That means you get some kind of vibration when you're doing various functions such as the dials. If you don't like that, you could just turn it off. I keep it on. It probably does affect battery life to a degree, but the battery lasts so long, I really don't care. This macro section, I don't mess around with enough. However, you could think of it as actions. Do this first, do this, do this, create this layer, lock it, etc., etc. As long as you're able to assign that in your program, you'll be able to program those in order as a macro, and you'll be able to execute it whatever button combination you see fit. As you can see, cycling through, there are many, 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 many options. However, now, I promised I was going to show you guys one of the problems. So we're going to take the side key and I'm going to set this up as undo. And I'm going to scroll down here. This is the side key again. And we're going to set that up as redo. So undo, redo. Now the problem is, since I've set undo as my first button press, that's going to work. If I want to get to redo, however, I've got to double click the button. Do you see the problem? 
So the double click feature does work. However, you have to put some thought ahead of time into how you want to set it up. I found at least in clip, the double tap feature is most useful when you're switching tools. Or for example, I showed you earlier when I'm cycling through colors. I want that color, I want that color, and now I want transparency. You see? So it does work. It just, when you start configuring it, you have to give it a little thought of the things you're going to have problems with later on. But once you get to fooling around with it, it's not that big of a deal. So this is what I was alluding to before. Technically, everything Torbox Tech says is true in terms of as many button combinations and such as you want. However, you are going to have to sacrifice one or two of these keys depending on your use case. For example, if the double tap doesn't work, you might have to sacrifice a key for a modifier. It's not that big of a deal. This is the benefit of having used this for over a year, as opposed to being a reviewer who gets it sent to them, uses it for a week, and then throws it up on YouTube. That's not what I did here. I've been using this for a year. Secondly, how many keys do you really need? Are you really going to remember 200 different button combinations? You're going to have to be some kind of a cosmonaut or something. You know what? I don't know where I was going with that. It's just, it's, it's a lot of keys to have to remember. You'll be fine. So as of the filming of this review here, uh, Torbox Text made an announcement and let me just tell you my response to it. it. It's exactly, there's no new functionality. They didn't add a button, they didn't do anything. The only difference is that one works with an iPad. My version, when I bought it, this is mine. When I reached out to them, I said, hey, are you guys gonna have iPad support? And they're like, yeah, we're working on the app right now. And I'm like, what the fuck? You gotta buy a whole new unit? just for iPad support? I'm like, why? It's Bluetooth. That doesn't make any sense. Really? I have to buy another one now. Again, in the spirit of showing you all the functionality, use cases, customization of the Torbox Elite, I fired up DaVinci Resolve. I've loaded some footage that I recorded with OBS. First thing we want to talk about is navigation. I've got this dial here set to play backwards and play forwards and then stop. I've got this dial here, which is more frame by frame. And obviously I could speed it up and go back and forth and go all kinds of crazy and make finite cuts. This dial here, it's gonna zoom in and out. And when I wanna see the whole timeline, I just click this button. The D-pad is gonna switch between various tools. This little button here is gonna select the clip closest to my nearest cut. So for example, I do a cut here, I click this button, it's gonna select that clip. Basically, 95% of my navigation is mouse and tour box. I've got these buttons set for in and out. This is my basic delete. This is my ripple delete. If we zoom in here, we make another cut and I highlight these clips I can just delete them. Alternatively, if I highlight these clips, I can ripple delete them. Now, that's now how I generally navigate my timeline, nor edit. We start at the beginning, and we go through an exercise of deleting gaps. So I'm gonna start my playback, I'm gonna pause, I'm gonna hold this modifier in, and what that's gonna do, it's gonna trim everything before the playhead. I make a cut right around here, and then there's this little space here that I want to get rid of after the playhead. I simply hold the modifier and I get rid of it. You would not believe how efficient and how fast this makes editing. Obviously it's in super slow motion to show you guys what I'm doing, but you can get through a timeline very, very quickly, getting rid of your gaps and getting your basic edits in with little trouble at all with nothing but a mouse and a tour box. Now I've got other things set up for example, if I want to make a cut right here and I make a cut right here and I need to go into trim edit mode for some reason, I can make these fine edits. I can go back to my main tool. I can drag things out through here. I mean, it, it, it just becomes muscle memory after a while. If I want, I've got my D-pad set up to select an ERS gap to wherever that is, left or right. And this guy here, Let's show, let's just make a couple of cuts. What this guy will do, if I hold the modifier key in, it'll skip to each cut that I've made on the timeline. 
it's actually pretty cool. And then I have it set up that if I want to go to, uh, for example, the color page, it's going to take me right there. And if I want to go back to the edit tab, just really, really quickly. Now, if you go into the color tab, some of you guys who are really, really into this, you can set all your dials and things like that just to do, you know, finesse type changes in the color page. I, I don't do that that much. I do most of my work here on the edit page, but I'm just really trying to show you the power. I highlight how efficiently this can make your workflow in any application that you're using for either content creation, digital art, or well, really anything. You can even set this thing up for music playback. Now, as an aside, I always like to throw in the different ways I use my workspace and when I integrate new things to it. You guys have heard me talk about Centweek over and over and over. This is pretty much how I do it. I've got Velcro stuck to the back of this tour box and then I attach it to the Centweek and it doesn't move. This makes it so I don't have to reach around and reach all over the place to try to get to my tour box. It makes it all more ergonomic. So what's the wrap up here after all this talky talky? At the end of the day, the tour box, uh, despite some, uh, let's say, growing pains in terms of communications and stuff like that, the device itself does do what it promises to do. It replaced my Express Key remote. I use it now exclusively. This is, uh, as I mentioned, Photoshop, uh, Krita, Clip Studio Paint, DaVinci. I mean, you can use it for anything that you can create shortcuts for, essentially. The TorBox console is updated frequently, although I wish you could save the presets to the device so you wouldn't need the software open all the time, or you could use it on another laptop. I have heard that feature is coming, at least for iPads, and the new one I mentioned earlier in the video, which I did bend the knee and purchase. I'll have that review up as soon as it comes out somewhere along the ends of the year. While it is a little on the heavy side and a little weird looking, it does deliver on its promises. If you guys like this video, you might as well check this one out below and I'll see you guys in the next one.